to Movie, movie Bitches. bitches. Retro Review episode 73. Tonight we're reviewing The Cat in the Hat. The Cat in the Hat. Is this technically called Dr. Seuss's Cat in the Hat? I don't think so. This maybe I it is. Think is, uh, maybe it is. I think it is. I think it is, because they have to or whatever. Maybe it is. I don't know. Okay. Anyway, this is a special episode brought to you by Lady Catherine de Berg, Chaz. So thank you, Chaz, for your support and your patience, because it's taken us a while to get to this. Well, you know, uh, we had to gear up to watch it. Uh, no, there you no, go. no, no, no. We're no, doing no. our best. We're... It does have 10% on Rotten Tomatoes, and I, I think that that's nearly justified. Actually, no. No. I'd put it higher. I would, too. I did not enjoy this. No. But I would put it higher than 10. 10 is really well, low. Nick's Nuts has, like, 10. Well, that's absurd. Or 12. Also, do you want to know something really sad? What? So, you know how we were doing our campaign to fix the yeah. scores of old movies? Yes. Since we started doing it, ah. people have been fucking the scores and making it worse. Goofy movie now what? has a worse score because what? new people have been reviewing oh, no! it and giving it a bad score. What? Isn't that monstrous? Yes! A mm. monster, you say? A monster? Where? <laughs> Remember when he showed up and was like, a oh, monster? Yeah. Wow, yeah. You remind, remember this movie much we better than We just I watched I it. I don't care. Did it you, was in already, and out. <laughs> you already mind wiped yourself. Yep. Lucky I will, you. I will never be able to get that CGI'd fish and the teeth out of my brain. It was terrifying. Me! <gasps> Came home in a baggie, loved me for two weeks, and then nothing! But anyway, thank you, Chaz, <laughs> yes. for this request. Do, do you like this movie? I think he wanted to torture us. Okay. <laughs> okay. But yes, also thank you to all of our patron supporters. $5 a month gets you ad-free early access. $10 gets you access to our viewing parties. You can watch our terrified reaction to said CGI fish. Oh, yeah. I mean, the viewing party is fun. Yes. And if, like Chaz, you want to request a movie, we have upped the ante uh, in part because the list is so long that we thought maybe that would slow down the, the request. Because we're just like we not get, that we're fit not them all in. Grateful. We're gonna get them to do. We're gonna get them. We're gonna get. We're them doing all. it. We're doing it. We are. We are grateful. We are excited. We are busy. <laughs> too beautiful and too busy. Yes, you are. Too busy. I am. That's You're why too I'm too beautiful haven't. and too busy. Second thing. Second. Make sure to subscribe, share, whole, follow us on Instagram, Twitter. Now. Letterboxed. Ooh. Share as the cat. Russian hook cat and a black limousine. Terrifying. Absolutely. Discuss. Not. No. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> there it passed. Talk amongst yourselves. I mean, that was basically his she, character. She was coffee talk. She yeah. was Linda Richman. Look, I'm a cat that can talk. That should be enough for you people. <laughs> no, the defense is wrong. Okay. 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 Marissa Tomei as the cat. <laughs> Oscar winner Marissa Tomei <laughs> as the cat in the hat. The defense is wrong. <gasps> we did spend most of the, or a lot of the viewing party recasting. I still think Robin, Robin Williams, Williams would have been ideal. Definitely better. Yeah. Jim Carrey. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, he was good. I actually liked him as the Grinch. I've never seen it. Oh, you haven't? Never seen it. It's not this. That and was this in is my, so good. That was in my the height of my um I don't I don't care for Ron Howard films. Ron but... Howard directed that? <laughs> Now, when did that movie come out? I looked it up. Okay, 2006? I, no. 2001? 2000. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, I okay. was surprised. Yeah, that's early. Um, well, actually, I was not surprised because um, this movie, were, okay, <clears throat> Cat in the Hat yep. from 2003. Yes. It brought me back. Yeah. We'll talk about it. There were so many things this movie reminded me of. Okay. Right? You're sure. like, oh. Beetlejuice. Well, I mean... I have, we'll talk about it. Don't say it two more times. Okay. <laughs> Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. It's showtime. I kept being like, when did that come out? When did this come out? Like, when did, mm -hmm. what was the, mm, huh? And I was yeah. like, 
clearly this movie got made because Grinch was successful. Sure. Got greenlit. And yeah. then I was going, well, when did Sh when did Shrek come out? Because, like, clearly this movie got made. You know, Shrek clearly Mike Myers was right, involved was with this because Shrek was 2000. Okay, also 2000. Okay, great. No, 2001. I'm so sorry. Oh, I was right. Oh, my you God, right. I nailed it. You were right. Sorry. And then I was going, okay, well, when did, like, Alice in Wonderland come out? Oh, right? God. Like, that, the Tim Burton. That was later. Yeah, yeah. That was, like, 2010. You fucking nailed it, by the way. Well, I remember because I was, it was my senior year of college. Okay. I and did, I went to go see that garbage movie. I did not because I was in my I don't see Tim Burton movies anymore, anymore. phase. Yeah. I had so many opinions back then. Of course. Oh, we don't only know. Only grown. <laughs> I haven't revisited this time right. in so long. It was a specific time. And so, um, and we're, we're almost just far enough away that we can examine it. 20 years ago. That seems really crazy. So I kind of wanted to see like what other movies came out in 2003. Okay. For a reference right. point. Because yeah. I did not see this in 2003. Pirates of the Caribbean was later? No? It was this year? Wow! Nailed it! Wow, okay. Nailed and it. Finding Nemo. Nailed it. What I like that it's just Disney movies. Um, that tells a lot on me. The Matrix was sooner. But... Matrix Reloaded. Yes! Wow! Nailed it! One, two, three. Oh my gosh. Um, Another franchise also concluded that year. Another trilogy. Terminator? Con concluded. No. <laughs> but Terminator 3 did come out in 2003. Andrew! <laughs> but that's not the that's last. That's not what I was talking oh, okay. about. I thought that was the last Terminator. Well, it it and was, now there's like a new one and, then and whatever. And it wasn't, and okay. then it was, and then it wasn't. Okay. Um, wow. I'm you are like killing this, this game. <laughs> killing. Uh, okay, well. Because I'm looking at the top 10 grossing okay. movies of okay, that wow. year. And um, so far, you have really. Like half of them, right? Really nailed it. All of the Lord of the Rings things were Oh done. my God. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew. Andrew, I'm scared. I'm not even giving you hints. No. It's just, it's just coming out of you. <laughs> that was number four. That's crazy. I'm trying to think now if there was like any rom-coms or something like that that I was not thinking. Like, like a, some comedies. Like a Wedding Crashers or a... No. There were some comedies um, on this list. Okay. There's, a se there's two sequels. sequels. Two number twos. Okay. I don't know. Rush Hour 2. No. <laughs> no. I don't know if you're going to get those. Yeah, I don't know if I will. X2. Oh, I never. Oh, God, X2. I remember two. seeing that in theaters. Yeah, me too. Wow, okay. Having a great time. Yeah, that Mazda, I remember that. It had the, the door, like the, the second door opened the other what, way. I Any, know what you're talking about. Anyway. Come on, get in. Get in. I'm driving. Hey, maybe next time. Bad Boys. Two. Oh, no, I wouldn't remember that. No, no. Uh, Elf. Oh, 20, 2003. Okay, yeah, sure. Bruce Almighty. Wow. Yeah. I don't think I saw it in the theater. Yeah. I saw Evan Almighty in the theater for reasons I don't know. It was awful. Yeah. Like, really, truly a terrible experience. Yeah. Um, and th this seems wrong. Chicago. It probably yeah, it was it, it was Oscar-y, so I bet you it technically came out in November in like LA and because whatever. Because Chicago won Best Picture, but mm -hmm. Lord of the Rings: Return of the King also won Best Picture, so there's some. Oh wait. There's some disconnect there, because they they that huh. happened, that happened. Lord of the Rings won Best Picture. So this says Chicago came out in 2002, so maybe it was still. Oh. Making the so, rounds. So, I bet you it came out it late, won like best Christmas picture, 2002. One Best Picture, and they kept it in theaters. And, and they it, were like, great, and, and it, it made, made so much made, money yeah, that it was that. Yeah yeah, 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 that makes sense. Well, that was a fun game. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it felt like a bunch of different things. It was um, a very, it very much was like a, a time and place. A time and place? Oh my god. Time and place. It was noise and colors. Yes, yes. <laughs> Bravo, cat. I think these children are smart enough not to fall for your MTV style flash at the expense of content and moral values. So much noise and so many colors. Okay. 
Okay, pros. Great. Less CGI than you'd expect. Yeah. They built a town. Yep. Practical effects. Yep. Huge sets. Big set pieces. Yes. Yeah. As terrifying as the makeup of the cat in the hat was, sure. preferred it to scary CGI'd cats. Yes. Oh, yeah. Preferred. Yeah. Preferred yeah. it. Yes. I was beautiful. They built a, a world. Yeah. And, sorry to cut you off. No, no, no. They cut. They built a world that was clearly... I mean, it's it's Tim. It's Edward Scissorhands. It's Tim Burton. Neighbor greeted neighbor with a neighborly hey. hey. It was clearly inspired, lifted from the storybook that we all read and and knew. Right? Yeah, yeah. It was like let's bring this to life. Ish. Ish. Mostly. Because the town is very the town in Edward Scissorhands. I guess that's the, fair. The pastels, yeah. everything's looking the same. The very. I mean, it is. It felt like. Um, I think "Don't Worry, Darling" oh. may have been more successful if it looked like this. Yeah. Yeah. Somehow. Yeah. Right. If they like, if only the set still existed. Yeah. They do. What? They do. Pomona, California said, we're going to leave it. And so a lot of it is still there. Want to go? Yes! Okay! <laughs> That's terrifying. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I mean, this also very much felt like it was supposed to be a ride. Like they were like, oh, and then we can make this well, the ride at Universal Studios. Well, would it Studios. surprise you to hear that this film was only made out of a contractual obligation? <gasps> Oh, really? <laughs> That's how the best movies are made. <laughs> At gunpoint, yeah. <laughs> At contract point. Yeah. Well, the contract scene makes a lot more sense oh. when you know... Something magical and full of wonder. <laughs> it's called a contract. You want us to sign this? Just a formality, really. So in 98, I want to say, okay. Universal had Mike Myers sign a two-picture deal, oh. and he was going to make Sprockets the movie. Sprockets, best German television presents Sprockets. Meet your host, Dieter. With Dieter, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't touch my monkey, right? Yeah. Would you like to touch my monkey? Touch him, love him, leave him and ask me But terrible idea. Don't do that. Sure. Don't make a feature film out of that. Right. Although... Maybe? You'd have to really write it well. But anyway. Speaking of the script, uh, Mike Myers was paid some exorbitant amount of money to star, act, write in it. Uh, write it. In this? Sprockets. Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> Now's the time on Sprockets when we dance. <laughs> That's all the time we have. Until next time, auf Wiedersehen. It and all it comes down to, to sprockets. sprockets. Took, he took too long. He kept wanting more time, wanting more time. Mm. Oh, yeah, I can't do this. They da, shelved da, 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 it. They da, da. said no one cares about sprockets anymore. They said, that's a breach of contract. We need to make this fucking movie. Sued him. Okay, great. He countersued them and okay. said, fuck you, Universal. Then um, this movie was the... Um, the, the settlement. The settlement of the... Wow. Initial here. And here. And here. No, here! <laughs> they said, okay, forget Sprockets. Fine. What if we Fuck made you it. the cat in the hat and we already have someone you to write it? You have to star in this fucking movie as a cat in the hat. Because we need someone who's a comedian who can do the voices. Yeah, because Robert Williams is too famous and Jim Carrey just did the Grinch. And right. Isn't good to do we, that. we couldn't have him do the cat in the hat as well. Yeah. There's only so many people at the time. And Kirsten, Kristen Wig. Wow. As the cat? Yeah. Cat! Yes, because it would be weird. It'd I be feel weird. like it'd be a lot of... <laughs> yes, feline. Should be very feline energy. Well, Chitara. No. Chira. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In Cheetah. Wonder Woman 84. Cheetah Woman. <laughs> yes! Catch the musical is back. And in the timeless words of Andrew Lloyd Webber, this guy's not part of it. He's just a crazy person. <laughs> Sure. Anyway, yes. um, yes. So when the, then the scene of and sign here and sign here and do this and da 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 da, da and the fine print and whatever, I feel like was a total fucking. Let's yeah yeah. 
So did he still write it? No. Okay, great. A couple of famous TV movie writers got you. wrote it. Okay, so And it, they wrote The Grinch. Uh, they punched up The Grinch. Interesting. And then And then did this. Then and then they did this. Um, Who directed this? Okay, I'm glad you asked. I have notes. Great. Because... You have the receipts. Show me the receipts! Did you know... Oh boy. ...that Bo Welch directed this? Nope, clearly not. <clears throat> he also directed five episodes of the Lemony Stickets TV show okay. and two episodes of The Tick. That's it. What? But... That's it. This is his only feature film. Wow. But he was also supposed to direct Sprockets the film. Uh, and we're going to add, your story has become tiresome. Now's the time when Sprockets let me die. <laughs> Didn't work out. <laughs> but he was the production designer okay. for, are you ready for this? Yeah. The Lost Boys, Beetlejuice, Ghostbusters 2, Joe versus the Volcano, Edward Scissor Hands, Batman Returns, The Birdcage, <gasps> Men in Black, Wild Wild West, and What Planet Are You From? That Gary Shandling, I'm an Alien, Mike Nichols movie that no one remembers. No. But wow. Wow. Okay. So many converging things that we were like, wow, this feels like Edward Scissor Hands. Also, this feels like Beetlejuice. Also, also why is he doing a Nathan Lane from Birdcage impression? Involves a musical number. Me, 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 me. Yeah. What's huh. happening Turns here? Turns out the director worked on all of those films, but has never directed a feature film in his life aside from this movie. Yeah. So, I mean, it's weird because on some level I'm going, you know, and most people are going, wow, you really tried to be Tim Burton. Right. But if he was the production designer on those... Doesn't that mean that Tim Burton relied on him and this artistic vision in a lot of ways? So I don't think that's an accurate... Um, Is, right, that's that's rude to him, rude to, to, him. To, to say you just copied. Because he copied himself. But also, this but, isn't good. But the best part about it... <laughs> was all of the set and production design. the production design. Yeah. So, um... Huh. But also... Perhaps. Yes. He didn't write it. No. So that was probably the well, worst... And apparently Mike Myers was a terror. Of course. A terror on yeah, set. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. because he was... He was angry he was being, that he had to be there. Contractually obligated <laughs> to be there. And yeah. was in a fucking cat suit. Right. And was like, oh, if I make us go over budget and cost you more money, oops. Oh, yeah! <laughs> so anyway, that was some backstory wow. that gave you some context. The drama. Of the time, of yeah. the era, of the place. Okay. You might not know this. Okay. Love Actually. Uh-huh. 2004? That feels right. Yeah. Should I look it up? What year did Love Actually come out? Because... 2003! No! November 7th, 2003! No. no! But it didn't break the top 10 list? I mean... It, well, if it came out in November, how could it... Oh, that's true. 2004, maybe. Okay, okay, okay. More 2003. Well, Kangaroo Jack came right. out in, guess which month? January. <laughs> wow. How to lose a guy in 10 oh, days. That tracks. Mm, Daredevil. Oh. We're at the beginning of the revival. Yeah. Old school. Oh, sure. Yes. Um, I was so close. I said Wedding Crashers. You but did. That was, that you was know, close. Yeah. That was close. Bringing down the house. I rewatched that fairly recently. Not good. I love Queen Latifah and Steve Not Martin. Not surprised. But it's bad. Agent Cody Banks. Oh. Isn't that Frankie Muniz? Yeah. A view from the top. Remember the Gwyneth Paltrow on the flight attendant movie that no. got shelved because it was going to come out right after 9-11? No, I never saw that, but wow, well, yeah. <laughs> There's no business like straw business. <laughs> I get to make jokes. Bend it like Beckham! Oh, shit. Yeah, that tracks. <gasps> what a girl wants. Oh. Makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. Yep. Holes. Oh, wow. It was the beginning of Shia. Right. Down with love. Oh. Italian job. <gasps> yes. I just rewatched that. Still love it. It's great. From Justin to Kelly. Oh, boy. Alex and Emma. Remember that? Rob Reiner movie. No. It's fine. It was terrible. Okay, great. But it was like, a, oh, that. Um, Legally Blonde 2. Oof. Oh, Seabiscuit. Oh. Lara Croft. 
Oh, I had, okay, interesting. This was when my cousin worked at Paramount. So I had a Laura Croft Tomb Raider poster and an Italian job poster because I was really into... Strong, tall, androgynous women. Yeah, basically. Gili. Yep, it's turkey time. Freaky Friday. Oh, Lost oh, in Translation. Oh. Kill Bill 1. Wow. Wow. Huh. Bad Santa. Wow, Bad Santa and Elf came out in the same year. That, interesting. That kind of tracks. Yeah. Huh. Something's got to give. Wow. That makes yeah, a I lot of sense. That, soundtrack that so makes a lot. Much. Me too. Oh, Cold Mountain. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's raining. They call this war a cloud over the land, but they made the weather, and then they stand in the rain and say, shit, it's raining! Wow. Well, if anything, thank you, Chaz, for bringing us back to 2003. Yeah, I love that uh, it seems like, you know, we knew that your superpower was remembering films and everyone in them. It turns out mine is identifying specifically movies in 2003. <laughs> anyway, uh, highlights, right? Sure. Um, I thought Alec Baldwin knew what movie he was in yeah. or was in the movie I would have liked to watch? Yes. Not going to military school. <laughs> I think you're going to love it. It's just like summer camp, except with brutal forced marches and soul-crushing discipline. And one more thing. It's Lawrence, you snot-nosed little son of a wonderful woman who I'm absolutely oh, crazy God. about. Gosh, I love children. And was actually killing it. Yeah. Has he been in a Tim Burton movie? <laughs> I'll just wait. Is he in Beetlejuice? Yes. Who is he in Beetlejuice? <laughs> oh, that's right. He's so young and cute. That's great. I'm great. excited. Great. Maybe him and Bo Welch stayed friends. There you go. I love that. From the production. I love that. <laughs> Basically, before the cat shows up. <laughs> I was sort of into this I, movie. I, I, will, I was you know? like, I agree. I was like, I, I didn't weird. say it in the viewing party, but I thought it. I was like, I know, because it, dr it draws you in. I was having in. fun until it draws got you got in. I mean, obviously, yeah, I'm strong, wearing this strong for a choices. reason. Yeah. Strong and wrong choices. Attention, everyone. It's 9.02. Staff meeting. Staff meeting. Live, <laughs> everyone. First, I'd like to welcome aboard our newest member of the Humberflube family, Jim McFlinnigan! Mr. Humberflub, I wanted to thank you. Fired. I beg your pardon? Fired. But I... Fired! But it sets a scene. We're in this pastel town. Everyone's acting strange. Yeah, Sean Hayes is doing a lot. He's doing his best Jim Carrey. Yeah, um, everyone's driving Ford Focuses. I don't know why. Couldn't tell you. Is Fast and Furious universal? Yes. So like cars. Why don't we take my car? You have a car? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Ford, maybe there's like a... Sure. Because the ride of it all. You mean like at Universal Studios? <laughs> Cha <-ching. laughs> Is the ride of this movie you're driving in a Ford Focus? No, you're driving in that silly I, machine, I and they're know. all little cars, and they're on a track, and then you get multiple steering wheels. And I did that appreciate fun? that somebody built the yes. Batmobile via Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Yep. And that was a thing that actually existed. The Seuss Mobile, absolutely. Loved it. That was cool. Yeah. Wow, that is so cool. That's just the dust cover. Here she is, the super luxurious omnidirectional watchamajigger. So, quick commercial break, and we'll be back with, oh God, more Mike Myers. No, no, come back, come back, really. It'll be great. It'll be great. Now, Michael Myers, oh. starring as Cat in the Hat. <laughs> Um, be a lot quieter. Yeah. <laughs> he does not speak. Oh, I didn't know that. You haven't seen any of them? Nope. Not one. Mm -mm. Not for me. Not for you. But I would like to see it. You know. <laughs> Meow. He doesn't need a knife because he's got claws. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
Kelly Preston is there, always great. That's the mom. Great. She, she, she's always great, really. Yeah. I mean, she, she doesn't get a lot of praise, but she's just a solid actress. Sure. She's yeah. just great. Yeah. So there's that. That is the end of my list. <laughs> More positive than you would think. That's true. For 10%. Right. Um, yeah, because honestly, I think the, the production design alone is worth 10% on Rotten Tomatoes yeah, for me. And I then would there's say. a few other things that get it to 20 or 25. And there was a few great jokes in there. Yeah, I did laugh. Dakota Fanning. Anything for my little princess? Oh, I don't want to be a princess. In a constitutional monarchy, Parliament has all the real power. <laughs> Which you did not realize until the credits that that was... Who did you think it was? Some um, girl? L? I don't know who she was. I, what would I know Dakota Fanning from? Uptown Girls? Twilight? No, you just watched that this year. Right. So I, Uptown Girls? Oh, with... Um, uh, Brittany Murphy. Uh, yeah. War of the Worlds? I saw that once. She's that the little girl in it. I mainly know her from Amy Poehler doing right. her on SNL. Good evening. I'm welcome to the Dakota Fanning Show. <laughs> the only forum for child actors to discuss cinema, theater, politics, philosophy, and the cultural zeitgeist at large. Because Dakota Fanning seems to be playing herself in this, or at least the persona that, that she was, projected, right. or whatever it was. Yeah. Like the the um, everyone was kind of making fun of her for being that pretentious. You know, I think everyone has a soft spot uh, for children's books. I mean, after all, you did do a Cat in the Hat. <laughs> in my defense, when I read that script, I saw it as a metaphor for ethnic violence in Central Africa. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently, it was about a cat in a hat. <laughs> Overly, right. you know. I have my Palm Pilot, and my list includes number four. Do something spontaneous. Do something spontaneous. Which actually really did make it a It was chuckle. a funny joke. Number two, practice coloring. Number three, research graduate schools. Number four, be spontaneous. I was like, wait a minute, did I misremember? Because I've seen this movie once. Okay. But I remember being like, choices, strong things. Yes. Weird things. Yes. Not boring. No. Um, I remember it being mildly interesting, yep. but bad. And so it, it, it lulls you in, it comes back, because you think there's enough groundwork there that you think it's gonna, and then Mike Myers shows up. And then Mike Myers shows up. I knew that milk would come back to haunt me. Help, help. <laughs> and he is just so all over the place and he doesn't really nail any of the things. No. That's the problem. Okay, I have a problem with the word dog. I don't use the D word per se, because I think it's really, really wrong. Yeah. But I will happily hold your canine American. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <It's my dad. laughs> Sorry. Hello! <laughs> now! <laughs> Hello! I'm so excited! Fun, fun, fun. He never learned you can have fun, fun, fun. Oh, yeah! It's no. not like he had... You know, he was he was good at this one thing, but then he tried a few other things that he was out of his wheelhouse and it went a little wonky. No. Well, he never had that moment, because, like, the reason why Robin Williams is so great, right? And, is, and Jim Carrey, in many regards, is because they always have that kind of, that moment where things got real. And the sure. veil fell. And yeah. I'm, a re I'm an actual vulnerable person. Yes. Right? And yeah. he, the cat never had that. No. That, at least that I saw. There is a third option. It involves... Murder. That's your option? No, but you guys both had options. I just wanted to have one too. <laughs> or did I? It was always a shtick. Yeah. And it was always a like bad a bad shtick that was trying too hard. Not only as the cat was trying too hard, that's a joke. Yeah. But no, he, that would... as Mike Myers, was trying too hard. Which is strange because he was contractually obligated to be there. Right, so you'd, you'd think, think he was phoning it in. in. But I said the whole movie, his entire performance is if you stretched out Donald O'Connor's make him laugh over the course of a movie. And also he's in a cat outfit. Come rain, come shine, come snow, come sleet. The show must go on. So Reedy, Pagliacci, Reedy. Definitely no. Positively no. Decidedly no. Don't you know everyone wants to laugh? Ah, ah. Until they're giggling all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. Because it's just, he's killing himself yes. to, for you to laugh at him. And, and, and you're just like, oh uh, my well, God. I mean, I, I actually do love Make Him Laugh. Yeah, like, I think that's I think very it's great. But yeah. it's that idea of just like, anything, anything for a laugh. Yeah. What can I do? Yeah. I hit myself over the head. Oh my God, oh my God. I mean, I did laugh when he cut his tail off. Did you just call my mother ugly? <laughs> Shut up. I mean it. I will end you. <laughs> You know, I laughed so hard I cried once in this movie, so worth worth another 10%. <laughs> well, that's interesting because... Son of a bitch! There you go, yeah. Um, when he was doing that cooking show <laughs> and he kept threatening, I, I, threatening I, I, violence <laughs> and himself dressed as normal man. But again, imagine that with Robin Williams. Oh, it would have been great. Anything. Anything. Yes, anything. <laughs> anything. 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 I'll get you, and I'll look like a bloody accident. Like, it got surreal yes. and bizarre at a certain point. Yeah. And it was so chaotic that I just lost my mind. Yeah. I kind of want to rewatch this on acid, but I don't know what it would do. Yeah, it might push you over the edge. Yeah. Because they do go to an, another fun dimension. Fun dimension? A fun dimension? A fun dimension. I like that. <laughs> All of the adult actors did, like even yeah. Sean Hayes, Kelly yes. Preston, Alec yes. Baldwin, they were all like doing it. Doing it. And they it were, was working. It was for mostly me. working, and especially they all were doing the same thing. Yes, they were in the same movie. Well, yes, and also like literally their characters continued to do the same thing. Right. Whereas Mike Myers was doing 80 different things. Well, yeah, I mean, once I heard it, so he's basically doing a Nathan Lane impression. Yeah. Although those drapes are a train wreck. <laughs> Layered with really an Ernest, uh, a Jim Varney impression. Because oh. when you go back and watch those Ernest movies, he does all these characters. He's got the lady with the neck brace and the, you know, the military man. And he does, and they have these weird, surreal montages where he's just doing characters all in a row oh. and they're talking to themselves. Huh. And it's very bizarre. Yeah. Oh my, I'm afraid. Sure, I'm scared. Everybody in box one is scared. This place is just screaming for Drake. Don't worry about the Ottomans. <laughs> Ernest! Direct hit. Way to go, Ernest. Do you smell fish? It felt like that, where it's like, now I'm dude, man, you know, and it was just like. And then it's now I'm the cowardly lion. And it's like. That and was then... one of his inspiration points. Oh. Um, and he said, Linda Richmond, obviously. Oh. Because it's like, bada. And um, Charles Nelson Riley. Oh. Charles Nelson Riley is with us tonight, and I'm not sure in what state of mind he is in, because he has just completed one of the shortest runs on Broadway. <laughs> True. He was directing a new play at the Palace Theater, and the play had uh, the distinction of opening and closing on the same night. You get worried when the audience leaves. You know what I mean? That's an indication. People when they got start up, actually? In well, they got up, they took their coats, and they left. I mean, it's interesting that we got most of that. It, it came through. It just was like, it why? It was just and too um, much. unfunny. Yeah. It was try too hard. Yes. But Alec Baldwin, I did think, was great. And like, he was giving good face work, his little purple suit, his purple pager, he his lavender whole, shoes. He had a whole arc, too. He That's was like, true. I'm pretending to have it together, but also nefarious secret reasons. I'm a mess. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. OK. Nobody likes a sucker. We didn't quite get enough I, of that. I mean, I think, no, no, nothing was explained well enough, but I think it was supposed to be, I need a wife to take care of me. Mm -hmm. And I don't have any money. I need money. her for I need, her job. I'm going to be her third kid. Right, right. Essentially. Right. And once we're married, then she's stuck with me. What do we think happened to their dad? No way of knowing. Is it Mike Myers and he's come back? Oh. Like, 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 like um, Ghost Dad? Like Ghost Dad or Jack Frost? Sure. Right? Yeah. I was waiting for, because Alec Baldwin said something about, like, I'm not your dad or like, like, whatever it was. Right, right, right. And I was like, because he's dead. Or you like some throwaway line, but it wasn't that. It they wasn't that dark. No. But, yeah. Maybe it should have been. I think it needed a little Tim Burton dark, twisted humor, to be honest. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, they should have gone into hell at the end or something instead of. 
the, uh, the other world. Or something. It could have used a little more creepy. A little more um, something. You mean like Clifford? Yeah, I mean right down to his purple pager. Like there's so many. The production guy nailed it. But there's so many choices. Right. I guess maybe because that was what he knew. It makes so much sense. Right. When you look right. at it, you go, oh, he knows how to do production design. Therefore, all the details went into that. Right. And weren't in terms of managing but, like, comedy. The performances were good. Other than Mike uh, Myers. Yeah. I mean, he directed them well. Yeah. The direction mostly, the failures came from pacing. This mm. movie is an hour and 20 minutes Plot. long. Well, I mean, sure. The plot of the book is there's not much plot. Right. And the, what they did with the plot of the book to change it was there's a dimension, a, a fun dimension. That's not in the book. No, that's not in the book. No. <laughs> so um, how do you turn this 20 page whatever book? Sure, but they could have into... added more to the work. Like the Sean Hayes and the that stuff was really so faded quick, away. And yeah. it was so just like gone. You're fired! <laughs> And, you know, obviously that's the point is like they're at home with the babysitter or with the cat and the whatever and, and I get it. But, but like, round out that then. You could have rounded out and why does Alec Baldwin have these nefarious motivations? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, what's going on? Oh, his TV and the thing. And everyone and the... else in the town seems perfect and everyone's affluent and no one has problems. Right. Except him. And why is why... that happening? Yeah. And does the cat end up then, you know, growing his heart three sizes or do we, is the teaser for the next movie right. that they thought they were going to make, you know, he's now going to show Alec Baldwin how to sure, like Mary Poppins. change his ways. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Not that Mike Myers isn't a funny person. We know no. that he is. Yes. But it's often such a specific humor. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this was too broad of a brush. Mm -hmm. And I, he needed a little bit more of like a channeling. It just was doing too much. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It was grating. Now, if he did the entire Cat in the Hat performance, but in Dieter's voice? I'm your host, Dieter. <laughs> then it is springtime, and like the blood and gorge gazelles at the Garmisch Partenkirchen Zoo, I'm ready to rot. Just because he's like, you promised me a Fuck goddamn you fucking guys, I'm movie. making this Sprockets movie whether you <laughs> want me to or not. And he's just fully existential German cat the whole time. It'd be a choice. <laughs> Might have worked, I don't know. Don't touch the fish. <laughs> Would you like to touch my monkey? Mm. Touch him, love him, leave him and out, Sminky. Oh, that fish. Now, I really, really disliked the choice that Sean Hayes was also the voice of the fish because yep. I kept expecting that to make mean sense something. or mean something or come together in some nope. way. And it was just because he was around. I kept expecting like, oh, then is something else gonna come alive and it's gonna be Kelly Preston's voice. Right. And is something else gonna come alive and, right. it's, so, and it's like a, you know, one a of those. A trans And it was you the whole time. Transmutation. I'll miss you most exactly. of all, Mr. Scarecrow. Exactly. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And you were there. And, and you, you were, were there. there. But no. Oh, what will become of us? Your mother will lose her job and we'll have to live on the street. <laughs> terrifying CGI. Oh, yeah. And um, the CGI teeth of his, oh no. And the, the, I hated it. Hated it. It was so disturbing. Yeah. <gasps> more disturbing than thing one and thing two? Oh, those were really bad too. I think that was more disturbing. Meet thing two and thing one! <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, those really were upsetting. That was a horror film. Yes. Also, the way that they like ride their babysitter's body. When they rode her like it was a log ride, it seemed unnecessary. It was. It was too far. <laughs> Inappropriate. Maybe it was. It was because it was in between. It wasn't quite a kids movie, and it wasn't quite an adult. No. You know, Tim Burton -y right. kids movie. Right. Dirty hoe. I'm sorry, baby. I love you. Come on, cat! Like when he's hanged? When he's like lynched from this tree and you're like, this is inappropriate. And it's this like, is and, oh. and but I, I'm laughing because <laughs> I'm like, yes! Beat him to death with those sticks! It's crazy! I don't think that was the artist's intent. <laughs> no. Um 
and then it got weird where then like that kid brings like the the Babe Ruth looking kid or whatever wax him in the balls mm. with the the big wooden bat and he has that cutaway scene to... right where he's on the swing and he's dressed like Laura Ingalls Wilder <laughs> And James Taylor's playing or something? Yeah, something like that. Confused. He liked it. Was that what it was? But I don't even know. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't a hellscape. I would have liked a little bit more Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Always. Well, sure. But, you know, like, and that, like, kind of cartoonishness to Always. it would have been helpful. Yeah. Well, that has a dark... I mean, that movie is a dark detective noir. Right. Played 100% straight. And cartoons are there. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, Bob Hoskins is in a drama. Yes. And you are like, yes, Bob Hoskins. He's in Chinatown. He, he is currently starring in Chinatown. And also, Roger Rabbit's there. Yeah. We were talking about the scene where, like, the fish is in his backpack, and the fish does this oh, yeah. to his strap. And I said, if the strap had gotten damp and wet, that adds such a realism to, oh, they're actually sure. there. And there's so many instances of that in Roger Rabbit where you go, oh, mm. They didn't have to um, animate a shadow right. of, of this happening or, or the, that made him feel like he was in the room with them. Yeah. But they did. They right, took the it, time. Well, because you need that, though, because it integrates. Because he integrates him in instead of just, and now there's this talking thing with ba 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 And I think especially when you've done such a great job of physical, practical effects and props, yeah. that then when you have something like this jarring, hideous, terrifying CGI fish, it really makes it feel that much more out of place. Yes. He just was so annoying. Yes. And he would do these, all right, lululu things. Oh, or, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, was he was the, the Kool-Aid guy? I was going to say, wait, was his catch for, was he just aping on the Kool-Aid guy? Hey, Kool-Aid! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, five or six times. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. With, like, the... And he had, like, a weird, They like, kept trying to make it, like, his thing. catchphrase. Right. But that's the Kool-Aid man. Remember when Paris Hilton showed up at that rave and everyone was wearing... I honestly would love to go to that rave. I'm. It wasn't really a rave, but it was an underground party. It was a PG rave. Sure, yes. <laughs> but she doesn't say anything and yet he is attracted to her. Oh, was he? Oh, that's right. He had the erection hat. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Who is this? <laughs> oh. That's my mom. Awkward. His hat got an Uno. No, that was over Kelly Preston and her. Oh, that's right. Her, her, her heaving um, bosom. Oh, no, it was her centerfold. Heaving. <laughs> um, but yeah, his, his hat got an erection. Um, yeah. That's a different movie. Right. I'm okay if you want to make that movie. I'm such a lucky love. Then it turned into the blob with all the things coming out of the... Do you remember Flubber? I do. Now that probably came out like 1998 or something. I'm going to say yeah. Yeah. I don't know exactly, but you can check. if we've, we've unlocked your new superpower. What year did Flubber come out? 97. 97. Oh, I was just going to say it. I mean, it was literally, it was But November 26th. So really close. Maybe you saw it in, in 98. I really liked it. Yeah. I mean, Robin Williams, charming. Bill Pullman? I don't remember. Plays the wacky scientist. Like the, he does? The, I'm pretty sure. I gotta rewatch. I think so. Okay. I'm going to rewatch it. Yeah. Isn't Robin Williams the wacky, absent-minded professor? Yes and no. <laughs> yes and no. Then what are you saying? I'm saying no. But I might have conflated it with Casper. Ugh. Because also similar time. I was watching Milk Money. Oh, God. And the girl in it, I was like, I know that fucking bitch. Who is she? Can I wear your jacket today, Brad? Oh, come on. What do you want for it? No way! <laughs> she was in like five seconds of Casper. Oh my god. Well, 
Did you ask her? Yeah. And she actually believed you? <sighs> this really bites. No, it's absolutely perfect. She was like, she's like one of the students. She was the bitch the in Casper. And I was like, that was that bitch from Casper. Um, you know what I just realized? Huh. I feel like that scene with Alec Baldwin where he takes out his teeth and he takes off his corset yeah. and he's laying there was very Death Becomes Her. Yes. With the mayonnaise or whatever the fuck we it, decided sure. that was that she was eating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah! Now. now, Robert Zemeckis having a hand in this back in the day mm. could have been interesting. Although I think already by 2003, that was more into his Beow Polar Beowulf, Express um, Beowulf phase. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So too late for that train. So that, to speak. For that Polar Express. For that Polar Express, it had it Left the flown station. right by. Well, and then, as if it couldn't get more early 2000s, Smash Mouth. Smash Mouth. Oh, yeah! <laughs> These drapes are so out there in. <laughs> Getting better by the Beatles, and it's the worst cover I've Awful. ever heard in my entire life, and I wanted to gouge my ears out. Is that too much? It's the worst photo probably encountered in my entire career. I just want to scratch my eyes out. Is that too much? Um. <laughs> And then they get another song over the credits. Sometimes I wanna cry and throw the towel in. His voice. Because it was because of Shrek. It really unlocked a time and a place and it brought me back. That makes so much sense. Music really was brings me back. Yeah, of course. Music yes. is is much like much yeah. people talk about like so smells bring you back. Sure. For me, music, I'm like, I know I was there. Oh my god, that's where I was. Well, the years start coming and they don't stop coming. Smash Mouth. Whoa. Wow. Another person that almost was cast okay. in this film okay. as the cat, Tim Allen. <laughs> I mean, I can understand why they wanted to do that. I would have not cared for that. Well, I'm trying to think, what it, what would it be? I mean, it'd be much more humbuggy. Right. And maybe I'd like that. And, you know, seeing Tim Allen in, in an embarrassing cat, cat suit, suit might really tickle a certain part of my brain. Yeah. I am dad. Bingo. No, but the whole point, and this is what annoys me, mm -hmm. the whole point of the cat is that it's Mary Poppins. It's fun, right. right? You're supposed to really actually kind of like the cat. You're like, oh, what a fantasy that you can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. You can play around. Oh no, things go crazy, but then it's okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you learn something too, right? right. Mike Myers was not doing that. No. I wanted to punch him. Everybody join in! Tim Allen wouldn't work either. That's why it needs to be someone lovable. Someone right. endearing yeah. who's also funny. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think honestly the only person would be Robin Williams. That comes to my mind. Yeah. You were talk you were talking about you jokingly said, oh, the composer. Oh. David Newman. Randy New oh, David Newman. Randy Newman's cousin brother. And you had joked about, oh, it's it's Randy Newman's brother. You're not totally wrong. I didn't realize this family was so oh, yeah. prolific. Yeah. I actually grew up with a kid who was like his nephew or something. Randy's. Y yes. So, so yes, he's the cousin of Randy Newman. Okay, great. The brother of Thomas Newman, oh. who's like Sam Mendez's go-to composer. Oh. Amongst other things. He's the son of Alfred Newman. Okay. Who was like, did so many fucking famous movies from the golden age of Hollywood, I can't even list them all. It was the nephew of Emil and Lionel Newman, who also were a pair that did so many golden age of Hollywood movies, you can't even list them. Great. Nothing related to Paul Newman. No, except that Paul Newman is in Road to Perdition, which Thomas Newman compose the music for. Okay. But they are not, not related. Related. But we did talk about how this movie sort of had a Matilda vibe. Sure. And um David Newman is Danny DeVito's go-to composer who directed Matilda. Oh wow. And Death to Smoochie and um huh. War of the Roses. Wow. And, you know, yeah, yeah. Huh. So Small world. You know. Yeah, intersecting. Anything not to talk about fucking Mike Myers. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> anyway, um, well, Chaz. Chaz, I hope this is what you were hoping for. Oh, purple goo. That was another positive. Oh, oh, the, like like when Alec Baldwin was, is covered and drenched in slime, goo. like he was on the Nickelodeon stage. It was goo. Yes. Joan, you were passing up the opportunity of a lifetime. You know what kind of kid your boy is. I mean, who are you going to believe? And um, I, I enjoyed the viscousness. Uh, I miss texture in movies. Yeah. That is true. I really do miss texture. Of course. Because um, it's real. Because it's real. And, and, and when you shoot on film, you get to see so much yeah. more texture yeah. of everything. Like, I want to see the wallpaper. And yeah. The, and the goo. Um, so, yeah. That was Cat in the Hat. Yeah. Um, better than it has any right to be um, with 10%. I guess. Is yes. What I'd say. Better than 10%, but not good. <laughs> hey, shut up. I mean it. I will end you. <laughs>